Mike, you talk a lot about great players. Seeing DJ Watt step up in that moment, almost something that you guys expect at this point. Really good with that. No question. No question. <laughs> That's, that's how he's compensated. <laughs> I, I don't think anyone is surprised by, by his ability to deliver in those moments. Um, and, it, and yes, he's a great player, but it's about what he's willing to do in terms of preparation and, and conditioning himself and, and all, the, you know, all of those things. It's not anything mystical about that playmaking, man. We're talking about a guy that's really talented, that works extremely hard, that's hyper-focused, uh, prepared uh, physically and mentally. And so um, that's what happens. Mike Tomlin heaping praise on T.J. Watt, one of the best defensive players in the game. I remember back in the 2017 draft, T.J. Watt wasn't one of the guys that I was really paying close attention to as the round nope. unfolded and he fell and he fell. But when the Steelers took him, that was that lightning bolt of – you know what? This makes a ton of sense. This is a match made in football heaven. T.J. Watt to the Pittsburgh Steelers. They see something. They have that defense. He fits in, and it's going to be fun to see how it unfolds. And he has flourished there. And signature moment last night. He's had plenty of others. But without yeah. him, Mike, they don't win that game last night. He had a couple of sacks, and he rips out the ball from Geno Smith in overtime, setting up the short field goal to win the game 23-20 in OT. You know, it's become an art form now with, with pass rushers. And I guess some of it now, it, it's, it's happened for a long a lot of years. And don't get me wrong. I mean, uh, linemen have learned how to who strip the ball from the quarterback. Uh, I, I get that. But I think it's happened more and more now when the emphasis on we're going to throw a flag if you hit the quarterback too hard. So a lot of times what you see now is you will see a player going for the ball, not just going for the tackle. They, we, we see actual fist, you know, clenching up like a punch to punch the ball. We see you actually eyeing the ball where it is and hitting the ball. You, you look at last night, T.J. Watt put his hand right on the ball. So there has been way more emphasis on that since it's been taken away of, hey, you can't hit the quarterback too hard. You can't land on the quarterback. You can't hit the quarterback low. So – I think defensive players are doing the smart thing and saying, okay, well, if I can't do that, and I'm just – you see guys now, they'll try and hit the ball before they even try and wrap the quarterback, just trying to knock the ball out. That's really become more of an art form, I think, over the last, you know, decade to half, half a decade out there with these players. And Watt does it great. There are others just have a great knack for it to, to strip the ball, and that was obviously a huge one last night. Geno Smith was not horrible. It took the Seahawks a while to get going. Once they did, they made it a game. It felt like it was going to be a steamroll by the Steelers. The Seahawks came out in yeah. the second half and began to make it a game. And Geno Smith acquitted himself well. And, you know, he's he played extensively two straight games now. Both end up being losses, but both could have been wins. And he'll get more chances as Russell Wilson recovers from that middle finger injury. But, you know, that was a tough spot for the Seahawks. Their defense not good. The the Steelers at home in prime time. And, uh, I, I, you know, I, I wasn't overly impressed with either team. I don't think we're going to see either one playing deep into January. But they've got – they've still got time to get better on the fly. And teams either get better or teams get worse. And, you know, if, if the Steelers can – keep leaning on their defense and not have their offense screw it up specifically not have Ben Roethlisberger try to extend plays or do pump fakes where the football squirts out of his hands the Steelers can be a team that can kind of gut their way through some tough victories and maybe be in position to make it to the postseason yeah I, I know you had said that earlier they, they were one of your teams I disagree I don't think they're going to be near the postseason I just don't think they're good enough but I thought last night that Okay, Seattle has the worst defense in the league statistically. You don't have Russell Wilson to bail them out on offense. You have Geno Smith, a backup in there. Uh, and I, so I thought this would be – and it was going that way. I thought it was going to be a big win for Pittsburgh. As you mentioned, uh, Seattle has a nice, nice comeback in the second half. Uh, but I, I just – Pittsburgh, I do think, can get some tough wins out there. I do think they can do that. Again, I don't think they have enough, especially offensively scoring, to be able to stay with the other teams in the AFC. And while their defense is good, I don't know if they're really good enough to hold some of these high-scoring teams down low enough for their offense to score points. Juju Smith-Schuster, obviously, on IR now. You get your tight end, Ebron, scoring a touchdown, a rushing touchdown, I think the third of his career. So you find other ways to kind of get the job done. Uh, so I, I kind of I, – I kind of at Pittsburgh – 
to take more control of this game and win it a little more handily than having to go to overtime very quickly. Uh, I, I, I'm very happy for Daryl Taylor. I mean, whenever you see a guy yes. carted off, uh, you know, on, on a stretcher and the l- rookie linebacker for Seattle was, I mean, that's a tense moment. It's an awful moment to, to have to see. And I know Pete Carroll said after the game that had feeling in all his uh, extremities. He had uh, the, the CT scan was clear. He was supposed to fly back with the team, but still. And I know a lot of times they take players off as a precautionary measure. Uh, that they'll just not have the move. And, and, but it's just, it's just tough to watch and tough to see at times. So luckily it looks like things are going to be okay from that standpoint. So I, I just wanted to say that because you got to have your, your thoughts with, with somebody like that. It looks like everything is going to be fine there. As far as the game, boy, then it got crazy at the end, right? DK Metcalf making a catch and not getting out of bounds when they don't have any timeouts going up the field. You're going, what are you, what are you doing? You know, the clock's running. He gets the ball stripped out of his – uh, out of his possession, and they recover. But then the, the refs have to look to see if he was inbounds. It gives him time to kill the clock and kick that field goal, you know, to go over overtime. So it was kind of a kind of a, a weird ending as well. I was wondering what he was doing. I mean, you have no timeouts. There's 13 seconds left. Get out of bounds. He cuts back up the field trying to make a play. I mean, I understand what he was trying to do, but the thing to do was to get out of bounds because that could have been it. And luckily, the review, you know, helped them get to the, to the line and, and get the kill, even though they had seemed to get it before the ref stopped uh, for the review. But that was a kind of a wild play before we even got to the, to the strip sack at the end. I thought that DK Metcalf believed he was going to muscle his way past the defensive back and score. I think that's what he was thinking. Almost like the Minneapolis miracle, and that play was relevant yesterday for reasons we'll discuss coming up. But I remember when Stephon Diggs caught that pass, people were like, get out of bounds, get out of bounds, you're in position for the field goal. Well, no, I can score also. I think Metcalf thought he could blast through the DB and get to the end zone. The only problem is he left the football behind. Another instance where they punched the ball out. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.